In this tutorial, we will take a look at features and functionality of a SharePoint task list. A task list is used to assign and manage tasks for site users. By default, a task list is part of a team site. There is a link to the task list in the quick launch list. When I click on tasks, the task list opens. The task list opens to the default view of all tasks. In this view, we see the title of each task, who it's assigned to, the status of the task, the priority assigned, due date, percentage complete, and any predecessor tasks. As a manager, you can use this task list to view and get an idea of what's going on in a department, the organization, or within a specific team. To add a new task, either click on Add New Item, or click on the Items tab, and select New Item button. A blank task form opens, and the first thing I need to do is fill in the title, which is a required field as indicated by the red asterisk. In the predecessors box on the left, you see the titles of the tasks already in the list. Within a task list, there may be a certain order to how tasks need to be completed. For example, if you're building a house, the foundation needs to be completed before the walls can go up. We will use these in another example. We don't need to use predecessors for this task. We can select a priority for the task. The default is normal. Then a status for the task, and I will leave this at not started. 4% complete, I will leave this blank since this is not started. The person assigned this task can update this once they begin working on this task by entering a percentage that best represents how much work is completed. And when the task is completed, they can change it to 100%. In the Assigned To field, we enter the user's name who this task is being assigned to. And I can just enter the first or last name of the person, click on the Check Names button. And unless I type the name in exactly as it appears in the user list, I will get this no match found message. However, I can just click on the person's name and it will drop down a list of every name in there with Sandra. So I'll select Sandra Mills. The description box can be used to provide more details about this task. For the start date of this task, I'll leave it at today since there aren't any other tasks that need to be completed before beginning this task and then I'll enter the due date. Before I select OK to save this task, I want you to notice the message at the top that lets you know that an email will be sent to the person assigned this task. So Sandra will automatically receive an email letting her know this task has been assigned to her. If you don't see this on your site, the option needs to be enabled. I will show you where to turn on that option at the end of this video. To save this, I'll click on the Save button at the top. And the new task I've just created appears at the bottom of the list. To update a task such as status or percent complete, click on the task title. And then click on edit item. I'm going to change the status of this from not started to completed and percent complete to 100. And then I'll click the save button to save the change. Next, we'll take a look at a few ways you have to view the tasks list. As with any SharePoint list, you can use the column headers to sort and filter the list. When you hover over a column header, you see the drop-down for the menu. So if I want to sort these by status, click the drop-down, select Ascending, and the tasks are in order by status. Or I could put them in order by due date, either ascending or descending. With larger lists, it may be easier to focus on a certain group of tasks by using a filter. Let's say, for example, I only want to see tasks that are assigned to Sandra Mills. So I go to the Assign To drop-down menu. It displays every name that it sees in this list. I'll select Sandra Mills. And it temporarily filters out the other tasks so I only see those assigned to Sandra. To bring back all the tasks, I go back to the drop-down menu for the column header and choose Clear Filter. Another way to look at the task list is using the built-in views. The task list contains several built-in views designed to provide users with an easy way to display the tasks they are interested in. To access the views, click on the List tab. The default view is All Tasks. 
and click the drop down for the other views. When I select my tasks, this displays only tasks that are assigned to me. And I'll choose due today. And these are only tasks whose due date are the current date. You notice the message here, there are no items to show in this view, so that tells us there are no tasks which are actually due today. Back up here to the list tab, the drop down for the views. Active tasks displays any task that is not completed. The assigned to view redisplays all the tasks but sorts them by the assigned to column. And the last view, by my groups, this displays tasks that have been assigned to a SharePoint group rather than an individual person. And there are no tasks in this particular list that have been assigned to a group. So I'm going to go back to the default view of all tasks. In addition to individual tasks, you can also create summary tasks. This feature lets you group related task items together in a folder. The folder would be the primary task, such as plan sales meeting. The individual tasks in the folder would be the subtasks required to accomplish the primary task. So for planning a meeting, the subtasks might be reserve a conference room, send meeting invitations, and order lunch from caterer. So we'll start with creating the main summary task folder. Up in the menu bar, we'll click on items, and then click the new item drop down, and select summary task. In this example, the primary task is to develop a management training course, which will be broken down into several subtasks. So in the name field, I enter a name for the summary task, which is develop management training course. And I'm going to assign this to Teresa. For the start date, you would enter the date the first subtask should begin. I'm going to make this June 28th. For the end date, enter the date when the last subtask should be completed. I'm going to enter September 3rd. And then I'll click Save to save the changes. And now you can see the summary task folder has been added to my primary task list. Now to create the subtasks in the folder, first thing I have to do is click on the folder name to drill into the folder. And now I can create the subtasks inside the folder that need to be completed in order to complete the overall task of developing the training course. So I'll create the first task and click on New Item. I'll enter the title of the first task, which is to meet with subject matter experts. And I'll leave this at priority and normal, status is not started, and each of these individual tasks will also be completed by Teresa. So I'll enter her as the owner. The start date of this first task is the 28th, and the due date is July 9th. And then I'll click the Save button at the top and the new task is entered on the list. So now I'll add the second task. The second task is to create a design plan. Now before Teresa can create the design plan, she has to finish meeting with all the subject matter experts. So to indicate that for this task, I would select that title of that previous task, make that a predecessor. Selecting the title, click on Add, and it adds it to the box on the right. Again, I'll assign this to Teresa. For the start date of this task, I will enter July 10th, since July 9th was the completion date of the previous task, meeting with subject matter experts. And then I'll enter July 23rd as the due date. And then I'll select the Save button at the top. The second task has been added to the list, and notice over under the predecessor column, meet with subject matter experts, which is the first task, is indicated as having to be completed before I can continue with the second task. 
So I'm going to go offline here and enter the next couple of tasks required for this summary task. So I've finished entering the rest of the tasks necessary to create the new training course. To back out of this folder and return to the main level of the task list, I'll use the Navigate Up button. I'll just click on Tasks to back up to the main task list. Earlier in the video, we saw that this task list has the option enabled to automatically send an email to a person when they are assigned a task. To enable this option, open the task list, then click on the List tab, and then click on List Settings. In the List Settings window, click on Advanced Settings. In the Email Notification section, select Yes, and then scroll to the bottom, select OK to save the setting. To return to the task list from here, you can click on Tasks up on the breadcrumb trail. Finally, we will take a look at how to view a SharePoint task list in Outlook. This will allow a user to manage their personal tasks in Outlook and tasks in SharePoint in one place. The first step is to open the task list, click on the List tab at the top, and then choose Connect to Outlook. If you get this Internet Explorer prompt, select Allow, and then choose Yes to confirm the connection to Outlook. The SharePoint task list is displayed, and a reference to the list is added to the left column under Other Tasks. To display your Outlook task, you would click on Tasks under My Tasks. If you are using Outlook 2003, the tasks in the SharePoint task list will be read-only. However, if you are using Outlook 2007 or higher, you can edit the SharePoint task list in Outlook, and all the changes will be synchronized with the task list in SharePoint and vice versa. To demonstrate, I'm going to change the status of one of the tasks here from the SharePoint list. So I'll double click to open the task. And this is the task to send the manual to the printer. I'm going to change this from not started to complete it. And then I'll click save and close. Then I'll switch back to the task list in SharePoint. And the task still reflects that it is not started. So I need to click the refresh button at the top here. And now this task is refreshed and synchronized from Outlook, indicating it is completed.